Welcome to Grow My Etsy Shop Podcast, the drips of knowledge you need to start growing. Hey, welcome. So yeah, last week, I if you guys remember, I kind of ranted a little bit about that review I got. And I just wanted to give a shout out. I got a handful of reviews from people. And my favorite one was that someone gave me five stars for talking too slow. So <laughs> thanks for that. Appreciate it. Um, you guys are know, you know how it is. You're, you're all Etsy sellers just doing the best you can. And sometimes you get a little salty. So that's all it was. It was just a little salty, but I do appreciate, um, the love though. So thank you. All right. So let's get into this today. We are going to be talking about, um, more or less the, the, I, I call it the SEO cycle, which is kind of just the pit that we sometimes get stuck in when it comes to SEO. So I think it's important that we kind of address this and then kind of talk about the ways to work through it. So I think the SEO cycle kind of, the problem is it starts and ends with sales. So from our perspective or from an Etsy shop owner's perspective, what they're doing is they're looking at their listings and then they're looking at their money coming in, the sales. And if they have their listings up and no money's coming in, then we immediately go to the, the, the problem of, well, no one's seeing my stuff. So because no one's seen my stuff, if they just saw it, they would buy it. So because nobody's seen it, I have an SEO problem. And so we start throwing in keywords, dun, 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 over. And then, you know, after two days, we don't see anything. Okay, change this. Okay, I don't see anything. Okay, I'm going to change these ones. Okay, I'm still not seeing anything. I'm going to change anything. Because we sometimes just feel like we're going backwards if we're not doing something. And so naturally, we want to be doing something because we feel like that's what's going to solve our problems. If I'm just sitting here twiddling my thumbs, no way am I solving my problems. So I appreciate that mentality like if you if that's currently something that you're doing like good for you because it's it's healthy to think yeah I'm not gonna I'm you know my car's broken so I'm just gonna sit at home and twiddle my thumbs you know no you you want to go out and try to dink dink around with it and see what you can solve right and every everything you're doing whether it's a success or failure is gonna be a learning experience for you and you're gonna get better at all that kind of stuff so I applaud the mindset however when it comes to algorithms we have to have a little bit of a different mindset is that Etsy doesn't crawl through. And that's the term that's used in algorithm. Like the, the, when some, when a bot goes through your stuff and picks up your keywords and places things and whatnot, it's not crawling through 24 seven nonstop through your stuff. Um, it takes time for Etsy's algorithm to go through and to pick your stuff up. Now, if you have done um, lunch with Jared, you would know that, a listing isn't going to make or break your store, but overall how you set up your store. In fact, real quick, let me go down this avenue with you. Because I, I've shared this, I'm reamping everything. I've been doing growth reports for a long time and they're not scalable. And I just thought there's going to be a better way to do this. So I'm really focusing on the workshop type stuff that's going to be coming up in the fall here. Super excited for it. I guess it's kind of technically fall. I live in Mexico. It is blazing hot here. So I guess at the end of the month is a better way to say it. But... Um, so part of this is that I'm going to be removing lunch with Jared from my website. So I'm going to, I'll put it on, um, I think it sells for $87 right now. I will put it out there for 40, 40 bucks. I I'd probably be, have, has another week before I take it down forever. I think it's a great resource and I think a lot of people have gotten value from it. Um, but because I'm encompassing now and putting this in. So if you're the type of person who likes kind of works on a budget, um, this is a great opportunity to get something for you. So I'll put a I'll put the link in there and I'll lower the price for you as well so you guys can get that as a going a going away special. Okay, so with lunch with Jared, um, we the the whole process is that we set up the store so that the store is getting maximum SEO and then we leverage our listings to get SEO um, results for us. But it kind of in that order. Um, if you do it that way, if you set up so that your store is set up that way, then it's going to take a bit of time for that to start to kick in because you're essentially using leverage from the entire store to get SEO. Um, and so if you just make, make those changes and then you change it the next day and then change it the next day and change it the next day, you're, you're going backwards in what you're doing. And that's what we don't want. We don't want to go backwards in what we're doing. So when it comes to the cycle of SEO, this is what I'm referring to that we, we change things, we don't see anything, we change things, we don't see anything, we change things, we don't see anything, and it puts us into that throwing spaghetti against the wall mentality. It's what makes us frustrated, and it and what essentially leaves us hopeless, because we're like, I don't know what to do, and that's what we want to solve today on this episode. So I want you to get into the mindset of SEO does not equal sales. Now, it does, but here's what I mean. 
let's just say you have an item and you decide that you're going to take a picture of the item and you turn the camera around and actually accidentally take the picture up your nose. And then you post that on Etsy and you're like, hey, buy my shoelaces. And it's a picture of up your nose. The chances of you getting a high volume of clicks on that picture are pretty slim, right? Because you, it's up your nose. The SEO might be great. You might do an awesome job with your keywords and your whole store is optimized and ready to go. But you've got this listing that's up your nose. Well, guess what's going to happen? No one's going to click on that picture. No one's probably going to buy it. And it's going to look, based on your stats, like a not a very successful listing. Now, let's reverse this. Let's say that your store isn't optimized very well. It doesn't get a lot of SEO. And you take fantastic pictures of these shoelaces that you're selling. Well, even though you solved the picture problem, you're, you're, they're, they're two different problems that have the same overall problem, which is no one's clicking, right? So one has great SEO, terrible pictures. The other one has no SEO, amazing pictures. Both have the same problem. That's what we need to address is like truthfully, what's the issue? Another great example of this is if you're, let's just stick with the shoelace example. If my shoelace is white and I sell it for $45 and the listing next to mine is white and sells for $14, what are the chances that my SEO or my clicks don't aren't very high for that listing? Probably pretty high because there's a $14 version next to my $45 version that's taking all of my clicks. So I might have great SEO. It's just that there's someone outbidding me on what we're doing. So high price, bad pictures lead to the same thing, which we then usually encompass as, well, my SEO is not very good, right? So this is what I want you to do when it comes to diagnosing your stuff. And this is in um, Lunch with Jared. It's actually in the dessert section. We talk about this. Um, but we kind of talk about like, hey, what happens after this kind of time period and, and you don't see success? What's some stuff that we can do? So the first thing that you're going to kind of want to do is look at the overall traffic you have coming into your shop. And the reason I'm having you do this is that I want you to know what your overall traffic versus sales is. So this is your conversion rate and it can be found in your statistics as well, is that you need to know this is how many, or how many people I'm getting to my store month over month. Is that number growing? Is it staying the same or is it getting less? And what is my conversion rate based on the traffic that I'm seeing? So you're going to take you know, three months back, whatever, how much traffic am I getting, this and this, and see what it is. If you are getting, um, you know, your, conver your conversion rate is essentially for every 100 people that come to your store, how many sales do you get? That's a good way of looking at it. And so mathematically, you can somewhat scale in your mind what that looks like. So if, for example, if you get 100 people come to your store in a month and you sell three products, that's a 3% conversion rate and you'll sell three products. Now, if you get 200 people to your store, you're going to sell six. If you get 300, you're going to sell nine, right? And that's give or take, but that's what that looks like. Now, this is where we get a little bit deeper here. Your overall conversion rate includes every single person who clicked on your store, whether that they came from this keyword or that keyword or th for this product or for that product or whatever. It's, that's what it's including. A way that you can really know if you have or where your SEO problem is, is if you take your, now this is if you have some action to your store. If you take what's actually selling, so let's just say the white shoelaces. You're like, okay, my white shoelaces, I sold this month 10 white shoelaces. And then you go through the keywords of what brought in traffic and you're able to say, all right, this for sure would probably be my white thing. And you can type them in Etsy and see them yourself and all that kind of stuff. But what keywords are people searching and finding me under and what listings are coming up under those keywords? And you're able to, you're going to be able to see really quick, like, yeah, when people search for these white shoelace keywords, I show up, you know, on this page and this is where people are finding me under. You're going to see that that conversion rate is actually probably higher than your store that your white shoelaces are selling better than the rest of your store. Now you can look at what other things are bringing brought into your store and you can type that in and see where you land on the page and be like, okay, look, these, it seems like these red shoelaces are on good placement, but they're not bringing in the same traffic that my white ones are bringing in. Well, why is that the case? And that's where you can start to play around with some of the concepts. I actually teach this stuff in um, dessert with Jared, which is connected to lunch with Jared. We just, we go to dessert after and we talk about what happens if you don't, but um, what you want to do from that scenario is like if you identify something that's like, wait a second, I do have something that is kind of working and something that's not kind of working. Or another way to look at it is your whole store is not really working. So if you're like, my gosh, I feel like 
I'm not getting any sales to, or I'm not getting um, any clicks to what I'm doing. I wish more than anything, Etsy would tell us our impressions and how many people um, saw our stuff. And, you know, like if you did Facebook marketing, for example, you can see how many people like stop and look at it. You can see how many people read the comments of your stuff so that, you know, whether they comment or not, you know that they're engaging with your, with your ad or your, um, your post to that degree. You, you just can't on Etsy. It's like, they'll show you the clicks. You know, they don't show your ad to carts or anything like that. Super annoying. So you kind of have to base off of, this is where things, this is why this is a confusing area is that's like, wait a second, I'm not getting any clicks. Therefore my SEO sucks. And it's like, but what if you're priced way too high? Then your SEO would seem like it sucked. What if your pictures are really bad? Then it's going to seem like your SEO really sucked. What do you have new store syndrome? You know, what if the listing right next to yours is this? Then it's just going to seem like your SEO is really bad. But that doesn't mean your SEO is really bad. Now, <laughs> let's talk about though, if you, yeah, it is. You're like, wait a second. No, I only, I'm only getting 50 clicks to my store and I'm selling two. You're like, okay, your conversion rate's great compared to how many visits you're getting. Now it's just about how do we get more visits? So I would go through the same exercise of like, well, what actual products are bringing in stores and what's my conversion rate connected to that? And where are other items coming in and why aren't I converting those? So that's what we want to start with. How can we hi- how can we convert the 50 people who are coming in as best as we can? And then from there, it's going to be like, okay, what products should we be selling or what products um, based on the t- people who are coming into my store? So f- for example, shoelace, p- buy- people buying shoelaces, we should know like they should be interested in these other things. For example, I have a bundle or I have this or I have that. They should be interested in this stuff. So what you're going to do is you're going to feature that item in your store. You're going to make it sure the listing is as beautiful as possible. You're going to cross promote it in your other listings. You're going to put it on your Instagram. You're going to, if you have an email, if you have a TikTok, if you have a Pinterest, whatever, you're going to promote it. If you can sell it in person, you're going to sell it in person. You're going to talk to your mom. You're just going to see, do people, are people interested in this and in my price right? Do people, is this a fair price for it to be? Because you might have someone say, wow, these shoelaces are great. And everyone will always tell you that. My gosh, you make great shoelaces. Great. You want to buy them? Well, you know, that's where you could say, wait a second, how much do they, how much would they need to be for you to buy them? What's the price that they need to be at? Because that could be a pricing issue and that's how you can solve that really quick is by featuring the item as much as you can and seeing. Because then what you're doing when you're featuring an item is, you, is you're essentially creating your own eyeballs. So you're not relying on Etsy's SEO, but you're creating your own eyeballs and trying to get as much eyeballs to that as you can. And if you don't see an increase in the sales, that's a good indicator of, well, I guess this product either isn't resonating with them or there's something wrong with it that I need to address. And so had you been trying to spend all your time in SEO and being found having Etsy promote it or <laughs> for you, you would have been wasting your time because it probably wouldn't have worked. So then from there, once you, uh, once you feature the item and you're not seeing it, then at that scenario, you need to address the item, but let's just say, uh, here's another way that you can do this as well is that you can just try to change the keywords to this item as well. So for example, if you're, if you want to try to go that route, you can be like, well, let me try to go more specific with my keywords. So for example, you know, um, let's say red shoelaces is your one that you feel like could be doing well or should be doing well. And you're starting to see some traffic from it, but nothing's converting. Well, let's move it to red shoelaces for Nike, for red Nikes or for red shoes or for what, you know, we're just making it more specific. So you're going to get less traffic that's coming to it, but that should be a higher quality traffic. And if you can convert that, that shows like, okay, I'm priced right. My pictures are good. The journey's right. It's just that my SEO is a little off. And that's a way to kind of indicate the SEO side of it. But if you do that and you still don't see anything, then I tend to say, right, lower the price and see if you can get people to buy and then use other successful parts of your store or any audience you have to promote the lower priced item to see if, you know, if that's what it is. And if you can't sell it for a lower price, you got a big problem. Yeah, that's when it's usually an issue of like, wait a second, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to sell this thing for pretty cheap and I still can't sell it. Well, that's when we need to self-reflect. And usually that self-reflecting moves into product validation. So is your product actually popular and selling on Etsy. And I'm questioning whether we should go into this really quick or not. Let's dip into it really quick. So product validation is um, essentially the process of trying to figure out, is your product actually selling on Etsy? And so the way you want to do product validation is you want to go to like a search and I talk about, I'm doing, I, I know all this right now because I've been doing this a lot and preparing for these workshops that I'm doing. So if you follow along with this, great. If you're like, Oh my gosh, I need extra assistance to that, then um, stick around for my workshops. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to, you're going to search, you know, white shoelaces, for example. You're going to go up to the right-hand corner of a desktop and you're going to go to top review, okay? 
and that's going to show you the stores that have the most reviews that are selling your product. You then want to see is this store with all these reviews, that means they're usually successful, are they actually selling this product or are they getting their sales or their reviews from other products? And so you go into their store and then there's ways that you can organize their store so that you can see what's most relevant. If they have their sales on, you can click on the sales and see that pretty quick. Another great, just easy way to do it is click on their version of their white shoelaces and then look at the reviews and it'll tell you, you know, this store has 900 reviews. One of them came from this white shoelace. You're going to be like, oh, okay, they're definitely not selling <laughs> the white shoelaces, not their biggest seller. They obviously have something else in their store that they're doing really well. It's very wise at this point to say, well, what is that? And then, of course, there's techniques to go about that to figure out what it is that they're selling. The reverse of that is, let's say you go in there and it says, yeah, the store has 900 sales and 600 of them came from the white shoelace. Well, you just got validated. Okay, this product does sell. And then, you, of course, you can look at their pictures, look at their descriptions, look at how they're set up and really just be like, okay, this is a learning opportunity for me. And then I always say, instead of saying, how can I be like them so that I can get their sales? It's how can I be different than them? So instead of studying your competitors so that you can copy them, you study your competitors so you can see what's working and what you can do better than them. So how can I be a better version of what this, because what Etsy doesn't want is just you next to them. Yep, here's my $14 white shoelaces and here's their $14 white shoelaces. They have a lot more reviews than me, but click me please. So there needs to be something that you do that's going to be different, that's going to help serve that same audience that's going to be different. And if you get good, and we talked about this in the last podcast episode, if you get good at you, having your mind work that way, you'll find that you could be successful on the internet when it comes to selling. So that's a really, really fast version of product validation of just kind of going through and seeing like, does my product actually sell? And if I see it, just because it's on the front page of Etsy doesn't mean it sell. It doesn't mean it sells, right? It just means it's it just showed up when you search for it. So this is the way to properly see like, is it selling? Are people buying it? And is this working for me? And if you go through that and you see it, and that's when we can then reflect back and be like, okay, these white shoelaces are selling for other people. They're just not selling for me. Now where's my problem? Is it, you know, now I can look at my traffic and, and understand it more. Like, okay, well, I'm only getting 50 clicks and my conversion rate's high. This is truly an SEO problem. Or I am getting a thousand clicks, but I'm not selling. Well, that's, that's not your problem. So let's look at what they're doing. Let's see how we can be better and let's see how we can stand out and feature our stuff better. So that's the way that all kind of works. My advice, overall advice is, yeah, don't get stuck in the Etsy SEO cycle of just changing your SEO and thinking SEO is my problem and if I change that, all my problems are going to be fixed. No, 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 over and over and over again because you're actually going backwards by doing that. You're just confusing Etsy and your stuff isn't going to be featured. So what you want to do instead is, is go across it in the right direction. So, all right, that's today's episode. If you are thinking... SEO stuff, I, like I said, I'm going to probably leave it up for uh, one more week. So you have a, a week to, uh, I'll probably announce that it, maybe next Monday, I'll, I'll take it down or next Friday, whenever the podcast comes out, I'll, we'll take it down. So we've got a week. So if you're like, Hey, I've been sitting on the fence for a while or whatever. Um, yeah, go take advantage of that. If you're a budget guy, it's a great thing for you. Cause it's everything else I'm going to be selling is probably not going to be at this price mark. So <laughs> go take advantage of that and until next week. I'll see you guys.